If we take a big picture uh, of the global fund industry, then we will see that we, as an industry, enjoyed uh, a really nice inflow of 1,250 billion euros uh, year to date, which brings the total size of the global fund market to 43 trillion euro. So overall, that's split between 25 trillion euro in the United States and 12 trillion euros in Europe. And that means that we are around the growth rate between three or four percent year to date. So that is good, but I think it's important to keep in mind that the Chinese fund market is growing much more rapidly and it has been the fastest growing fund market all over the world. Unfortunately, uh, if we look and we delve a little bit deeper into the details of these figures, we will see that a big part of it also went into money market funds and not the more longer term oriented uh, assets. So let's have a look then on the United States. Well, there we have seen, uh, despite the strong equity market performance, some outflows in equity funds and inflows in bond funds. But as I just mentioned, the biggest part of the inflows went into money market products in the United States. In Europe, partly a similar picture the biggest part of the inflows went into money market products, but there has also been a positive inflow in equity and bond funds. Now, within equity, we see particularly much interest from investors in global equity funds and thematic equity funds. Within the bonds, we see mainly uh, investors going into corporate bonds, be it on the investment grade side and the high yield side. So in terms of region, uh, the European market is still a fragmented market, let's say, but we have seen the strongest performance in France, Switzerland and also Belgium, where we have seen a lot of inflows. Scandinavian countries, on the other side, have seen a very low uh, uptick in uh, fund investment. And then also important to know is that the number of funds has been shrinking over the last years. Um, which is already uh, happening for some time. And that is also to bring the average size of the European funds a little bit higher. And today we can say that the average size of the European fund is around 350 million euros. Well, there are three main trends that we can identify. And the first one is maybe the strongest one, is the trend towards sustainable investing. So it's really a strongly growing segment, uh, so it's growing at around 90%, which is much higher than the European fund level, which is growing at around 5%. So really strong growth, strong inflows, 150 billion going into sustainable funds in Europe. Knowing that overall the long-term funds, they are pretty much flat. That means that there is a switch ongoing from investors going out of traditional funds, going into uh, sustainable funds. And so with that, we are already at a 10% market share. So 10% of the European funds are sustainable funds. And that's clearly illustrated also by the fact that sustainability, not only for Candrian, but for a lot of other asset managers, has really become really strategic and very important. And with that, of course, there is also much more attention from the regulators. And still, there is new regulation that will need to be implemented in the coming year. So there is the European taxonomy, there is the sustainable finance disclosure regulations and some other elements that will uh, keep us busy for the time uh, for the next months and years. So that's the first trend. The second trend, and I already alluded to that, is the trend in towards thematic equity funds. So that's also a trend growing very rapidly, much faster than uh, general European equity funds today already 11 percent market share and that's mainly concentrated to give you some examples on the healthcare sector obvious of course linked to corona crisis environmental and climate teams are really an area of development of asset managers and then technology so a lot of new funds also on technology were launched over the last uh, year and then the third trend, also a longer term trend that we can identify, is the appetite for private capital. So we all know pretty well the public bonds and public equity markets, but increasingly, and mainly due to the low interest rate levels and the volatility within the public equity markets, investors, so institutional investors, but also private and wealth investors, they are increasingly looking 
for capturing the illiquidity premium that you can have on private capital. So that's uh, what, what do I mean with private capital? So there is a real strong demand for uh, real estate, private debt, uh, private equity, and infrastructure. Well, obviously COVID has had a profound impact on the whole society. So, and also uh, that means also obviously on the investor behavior. But in essence, I believe that the COVID-19 crisis has accelerated some existing trends. So the existing trend towards sustainable investing, so the ESG investing and private capital that I already mentioned, well, I think there has been accelerated and it can be illustrated, for instance, by the uh, increasing interest in impact capital, which is a little bit overlapping between ESG and private capital. So that's an area where we see uh, a strong development. Furthermore, due to the fact that interest rates will continue to remain quite low, we expect to see also a renewed and a further interest into higher yielding asset classes, be it high yield, emerging market, emerging debt, uh, all linked to the COVID crisis, there will be a sustained interest in these kind of uh, elements. Additionally, also the regulators, they will increasingly focus on liquidity. So during the crisis, we have seen some asset managers struggling with liquidity and some of their funds. So we can reasonably expect that uh, regulators will put more emphasis and more attention on the liquidity of the funds. But above all, I, I really believe that there is a real opportunity today uh, for asset managers to help the European economy recover from this severe crisis and especially to recover in a sustainable way. So I see a role for asset managers in connecting the savings from our clients with the sustainable investment needs of the companies and governments that we operate in. So we believe that more than ever, it's our role of the industry uh, is crucial to reach the long-term goal of a sustainable economic model. And that, I guess, is one of the real opportunities and challenges after this COVID-19 crisis.